Welcome back to Story Glimpse. Today's story is called Audition Surprise. Will superpowers be enough to win the audition of a lifetime? Stay tuned. Welcome back to Story Glimpse. I'm Weston Kincaid, best-selling horror and mystery author. Uh, if you'd like to find out about my books, follow the links below. And also, remember, leave a comment. We'd love to hear what you have to, th uh, to say. Uh, any ideas you may have about upcoming episodes, please like, subscribe, and click the bell to find out about those up upcoming episodes. So let's go ahead and get started with Audition Surprise. As Dion stepped on the stage in front of a panel of celebrity judges, his head was bowed. Scrawny, dressed in a checkered red and white button-up, he looked like a character out of Revenge of the Nerds. The only thing missing was the pocket protector. But there was one major difference. The guitar hanging around his neck, decked out in 80s rock band memorabilia. Pushing his glasses up his nose, Dion turned and raised his eyes to the judges. His two bandmates stood behind him silently. Telly was tense. Her grip on the neck of her purple guitar would have strangled a turkey. Dressed in her normal goth attire, black spandex leggings, ruffled black tutu, and a t-shirt, she stood in a stoic power stance. Their third member, Dion's childhood friend Jacob, stood tall. He was a lanky beanpole of a teen, dressed in a black leopard skittles band t-shirt and jeans. An electric harp hung from his gangly frame. Welcome to America Has Skills, said one of the female judges, dressed flamboyantly like an Elton John spoof. Melanie Dritz had dirty blonde hair that stood six inches over her head, another 80s fad making its way back into fashion. She was the lead singer of the Ravens, an all-female country band, always topping the charts. We're glad you made it this far. Thank you, Dion mumbled. We're glad to be here. So tell us about yourself, said Frank Smiths, a curly-haired, overweight wrestling announcer past his prime. At least his black suit looked newer. Dion cleared his throat. My name's Dion, <clears throat> and I'm a high school senior at James Madison High in Cali. This is Telly and Jacob, my bandmates. Together, we're leopard skittles. A few judges snickered. One of, one of our videos went viral last month, he continued. Melanie's eyes widened. That's where I know the name, she smiled. Gotta love a little magic thrown in. Have y'all seen it? She asked the other judges. They shook their heads no. At the opposite end, a judge from the classic hairband Paleo Scales said, So what do you have to show us today? The monotony in his voice made it clear the previous auditions had not impressed. Dion smiled nervously. His outlandish take on the classic song had entertained the earlier judges, but now it was time to perform for celebrities. My take on green sleeves. Their faces dropped. This clearly wasn't the best idea. But Dion was not deterred, nor were his bandmates. At school, he and his friends were stereotypical outcasts. These judges wouldn't be as harsh as the other students. Besides, this was the same response they had gotten earlier. The looks on their faces changed as soon as the band started playing, though. He just hoped these judges responded the same way. There's just one more thing, Dion said. It's sort of a tradition. Before we start, please think of one thing you love. You can pick anything, and we'll work it into the song. Previously, this had been the cherry on top of every performance, a bit like a magician's act thrown in to spice everything up. The third and final judge, Brian Wiggins, a well-groomed boy band singer from All's Well, asked, Do we tell you what we're thinking? Like audience participation? Telly chimed in, No, don't tell us. That's part of the act. The judges exchanged raised eyebrows, but took a moment to do as he asked. When they were ready, Dion summoned his courage, planted his feet apart in a rock pose, and felt the familiar tingle twist down his arms, through his fingers, to the keys. He nodded at his friends once, twice, a third time, striking the first note. Music blazed through his fingers as though he were a savant. His eyes closed. The electric feeling spread through him until green sleeves was all he could hear. Telly and Jacob were in tune, their melodies floating and rising to a crescendo, then falling before rising again. Dion risked a glance at the judges amidst his reverie and was happy to see all four staring open-mouthed. The song felt as though it went on for ages, although Dion knew it was mere minutes. 
As the melody dwindled, the judges gawked. To the surprise of all, a blossoming rose bush glistened under the stage lights right in front of Dion. It grew straight from the wooden floorboards. My God, Melanie whispered. Where'd that come from? asked Brian. It wasn't there before. He got up and strode to the plant, circling it in disbelief. The rose bush was part of the building. Dion had seen things appear before. A vase with a tulip. Even a full beer when they performed at a brewery and restaurant. However, this was new. The rose petals glistened, tinged with a luminescent gold. How did you do that? Frank demanded. I... I... Jacob tried. Telly stood staring, silent. The, this is a bit different than before. We've had some things appear. A vase with a flower, a stuffed animal and stuff. But never anything like this. It's my rose bush, Jimmy Tynes, lead guitarist from Paleo Scales said. The one from my dream. Dion nodded. Yep, whatever it is always comes from the audience. Have you ever had someone's nightmare come to life? Asked Jimmy, his look unsteady. The three performers shook their heads. The judges looked relieved. How did you do it? Melanie asked. Dion smiled. Sorry, but I can't reveal our secrets. Not to mention, I can't say what I don't know, he thought to himself. Time to discuss, Brian announced. The four put their heads together. Dion knew they'd been impressed, but this year there were no magicians on the judges' panel. That could prove to be their downfall, and he wasn't comfortable with the tone of their voices when he declined to answer. The judges turned back around. Jimmy said, There's no doubt you three can play. That was great, but this, this is a hard one. Magicians have never done well on this show, and we need to know details before we let anyone in, into the live performances. Are you sure you won't reveal it? Dion's gut twisted under their scrutiny. His biggest fears could be coming true. He couldn't tell them something he didn't fully understand. And why should he tell them? Magicians don't reveal the secrets behind their tricks. He glanced back at Jacob and Telly, who returned his gaze with pleading eyes. None of them knew how they made this work, or even who was responsible. It could be any of them. His shoulders fell. I'm sure, he replied, defeated. Jimmy shook his head. Then my vote's no. Leopard Skittles isn't moving on. You only need three, Melanie reminded the band, her voice bubbly. I loved the music. You had me stuck to my seat like a tree frog. And that last bit with the rose was wonderful. I mean, wow! I don't know how you did it, and I really don't want to. It looks like something from that wizard movie. You know, floppy-headed guy with the long beard. You guys will be awesome on AHS Live. My vote is a big, fat yes! Brian chimed in with, You are certainly the act to beat. Everything was astounding. It's a yes for me. He smiled and glanced at Frank, the last judge to weigh in. Frank Schmitz sat and thought for a moment. Shaking his head, he said, Not happening. It was a good performance, but we already have tons of singers. He waved a hand backstage. There's a conference, conference room full of other acts as good as you and better. Everyone wishing for a chance. If that's all you got, some virtual reality tech or whatever, I'll pass. Dion's heart plummeted. His passion and emotions boiled. What do an over-the-hill announcer and a band of retirees know about modern music? Or magic, he thought. Melanie and Brian's grins fell. Really? Melanie asked, standing enthusiastically. Y'all are passing on this? She waved a hand at Dion and his friends. Yeah, Jimmy said. We are. Too many uncertainties. This could be a fluke. Personally, I don't want to be the judge who approved this when it's proved to be a charade. Don't know about you, but my gullible ass ain't going on live television. Looking around the field theater, he added, well, at least not in that light. Exactly, Frank added in support. Brian turned to Dion and the band, an expression of sorrow on his face. You, you guys will do great. Sorry it didn't work out. Dion nodded, his anger simmering. Leopard Skittles left the stage with heads bowed. Wait, Melanie yelled, panic in her voice. Dion and his friends stopped. I know this didn't go the way you and I wanted, but I love your songs. Thank you, Dion re responded. She asked, will you do me one favor? 
What's that? Tully chimed in. Hey, girl, Melanie shouted. You did incredible. And make sure you try again next year. Thanks. But what was the favor? Melanie folded her hands and pleaded. Please play one more song. Show these fools what they're missing. Whoa, Frank interrupted. Melanie held a finger up to him, continuing. Please, when you start playing, you know they won't resist. A grin lit Telly's face, but he'd known her since they were ten. There was something different about it, calculating. Before he could think a moment longer, they were ushered back onto the stage. Telly mouthed, Goodbye, sweetheart. Both turned to Jacob. With a nod, they assumed their positions. Colored lights fluttered overhead, then spotlit the three bandmates. Jacob began crooning the first words, plucking his electric harp, and Telly played her guitar. The music flowed through all of them. This time it began as a tingle in the tips of Dion's fingers, then spread to his lips. Instead of the way it felt before, like he was fully part of something more than himself, Jacob's words felt like they were guiding his injure, his energy, molding it. To what? He didn't know. He wasn't even sure Jacob was directing this song, but it never felt this way before. They had only performed in front of audiences a dozen times. That was more than enough to know the difference. This song was off, like it had been hijacked. How and why, he didn't know. But it didn't feel bad either. In fact, it was quite the opposite. Different from before, but still intoxicating. If he allowed himself, he could fall into the magic stream just as he had before. Telly caught his attention as she stepped back, playing her guitar without a second thought. Get with it, she mouthed. Trust me. It took a second, but her words sank in. Well, that answers that question. Guess she's the one with the gift. Trust me, echoed through his thoughts as he sang, enough that he forgot the words. Telly glared at him. Did he trust her? The question was simple. He did, accepting his place in the music. As soon as Dion added his vo voice with, I hate to leave you, but I really must say, good night, sweetheart, good night. He felt the energy burst from him like unlike ever before. He managed to open his eyes, spotting the rosebush. Its leaves and petals were tarnished, going from gold to rust to dust. In seconds, the plant decomposed. In its place, dark, gnarly roots grew up through the stage's floorboards. Ragged root tendrils continued to grow, quickly slithering out and swiping back and forth through the air. Root systems wrapped and bound themselves together, growing larger. They threatened the judges and audience. When they sensed denial or movement, the root sped toward it. Dion's eyes widened to orbs as an elegantly dressed woman out for a night on the town was swept up by a root and dangled overhead. Her screams sent the crowd into chaos. People shouted, shot up from their seats, even shoved and jostled for the doors. As more of the glorious tones left their lips, the arms of a living root system reached out from the walls, slithering around people, then slamming them back against them, anchored seats and onlookers. Blood splattered the tat tattered black velvet walls. Wait, he started to scream, trying to break free of the addictive music, but the hold was too strong. He sank deeper into the euphoria, his fingers plucked with minds of their own. The entire auditorium was engulfed in magic tentacles, as if portaled in, which seemed all too plausible to Dion. What had they done? R r he tried to scream, to break the incredible hold. He wanted to win, but what was this? It wasn't winning. The cameras were rolling, a few holdouts manned portable recorders dodging the chaos. People's lives were at stake, innocent people. Many were even their fans. For Dion, it was like being caught in the currents of an immersive river of magic rapids. But if he couldn't break free, he sure as hell could do more than scream run. He was in the river, a part of it, for better or worse. Gathering his guitar in both hands, he summoned every scrap of willpower and refocused. Dion's rage and horror surged into the magic river, coursing through the trio. In doing so, he gained more control. He also sensed more through the tendrils, felt the bones break and crush in the woman overhead. Now there was nothing left in her body, no spirit. Yet the bundled roots relished in her nutrients. The realization shocked Dion and spurred an idea. Like Midas, Dion would guide part of the magic toward beauty. That had always proved easiest. 
Picturing a contagion of gold infecting the organic horrors, a sense of peace settled into his bones. What he pictured was majestic, like royal palaces in Europe and Great Britain, infused with nature. The emotion flowed through him, within the music, and became reality. Telly glared his way, pausing in her performance, but she was as much in control as he. They were all locked in the spell until it finished. A short time later, the trio strode through the outer doors without pause, instruments in hand. There wasn't any time to lose. Sirens echoed from blocks away. Behind them, the large theater glittered as though carved from gold until the curved top began sifting off, drifting to the floor within. As the golden dust spread, it infused the floor and beyond. Even people were quickly turned into golden statues, then golden ash. Dion and his crew stepped up to the crowds of people passing along the sidewalk, hardly noticing what was going on behind them. Dion was at a loss about his future, but nothing like this could ever happen again. Leopard Skittles was dead so far as he was concerned. At least he'd stopped the roots. It would be a horrifyingly beautiful monument for future scientists to puzzle, to puzzle over. He would only hear later about the tarnished addition to the spell. Although silent, Jacob would have agreed. That would have been the least of his worries, though. His name was on the documents. They could trace them through the band. They hadn't tried to hide their identities. Then he realized something more. The show required his parents to give signed permission, too. He was a minor. Suddenly, my parents are going to kill me, blared through his mind. He had to get out, to get away. A subtle quirk of Telly's lips hinted at a smile. This, is, this had proven far better than she could have hoped, unless they'd won. Of course, that would have been different, but they didn't. She would have to accept that, for now. What she truly couldn't believe was that Jimmy Tynes hadn't spoken out or even given them a chance. It was the least he could do for his daughter. Well, it would have been had he known. It was reassuring to know her little addition was infused before she lost control of the song, though. Her mind turned to the situation at hand. This scene would undoubtedly go viral if it wasn't already. So what does the future hold, she wondered, blending into the crowd. The End Thanks again for joining us here at Story Glimpse. I hope you enjoyed our story, Audition Surprise. Now, if you'd like to find out more about my books, follow the links below. Also, please, please leave a comment. Let us know what you'd like to see and what you thought about the story. Also, click like, subscribe, and the bell to find out about upcoming episodes. Thanks again for joining us, and remember, keep writing! Thanks again for joining us here at Story Glimpse, and that is a wrap for season one. But, just wait, we have plenty. Well, and you may have heard our dogs upstairs. They do happen to uh, be a little noisy now and again. But, stay tuned. January 5th, season two of Story Glimpse is coming your way. All thanks to the, st the team of Story Medics. I hope you have a good holiday, drive safe, and remember, keep writing. Happy, Happy New holidays. Year! Oh. <laughs> I did all of that, and y'all flubbed that. <laughs>